Ladies and gentlemen, Danny D back at it again with a special guest that I have today with us. And if you don't know her, you're probably living under a rock. Self-made celebrity, Miss Dakshita Kumar. Oh my God, I actually thought you were going to say my next guest needs no introduction. But here you are That's what I should have said. You should have said that. You can call me Dax. Or Doll Dax. Oh, that's my Instagram. Doll baby. underscore Dax. That's her Instagram, ladies and gentlemen. So check it out. Thing. Let's let's start from the beginning. How did it all start? Where are you from? How did you get into this whole lifestyle? So basically, I'm Indian origin. I was actually born in Bombay, and I went to boarding school in India, in one of the hill stations out there. And it was actually a military boarding school. So yeah, my journey began there. My first job was always a sales job. When you're like 16, 17, and you want to make that quick buck. Yeah. So it was always related to sales. <laughs> my very first independent job in which I've made a living out of has always been real estate because that's how I started. In spite of not having any knowledge, not having the experience, but that's something that I always wanted to do. Obviously for the fact that uh, you do make a lot of money in it, but it's also something which I'm really passionate about. Okay, so it's not all about the money because that's the initial reason why everyone jumps into real estate, right? So, so you had a passion for it, you wanted to do it, and yeah, the money was just like an incentive. To be it. honest, I'm, I really love my job. It's something that I look forward to doing every single day. I look forward to closing deals every single day. And yeah, apart, money is always the motivation, right, in the beginning. But at the end of it, you have to love what you do. Always, and if yeah. you don't love what you do, you're never going to make it big in whatever field you try to do, right? You can't be chasing something just because you think that, okay, there's a lot of money in there. Right? It's like if you want to do trading, you want to do bitcoins, everybody chases whatever is trending. True. But at the end of it, yeah, it's only your talent that perseveres. Yeah. So if you're good at something and you, know, and you know that you're passionate about it, then the money just kicks in automatically. Awesome. Well said. And were you always into real estate? I mean, before, like when you were in India or did you come to Dubai and hit the Dubai real estate market? So it was... I was always into real estate, but that was also, like I said, my first job was in Dubai, not in okay. India. I never worked right, in okay. India. I only went to boarding school there. So everything that I started was in Dubai. So it's been almost a decade years experience and I've been really, really blessed. That's all I can say right now. Okay. And then uh, when you came to Dubai, like how was the whole uh, experience with real estate? Because it must have been way earlier when the market wasn't this insane, right? Yeah, I mean, of course, at, at that time when I just stepped into it, it was a really new market. It had just started. Everybody was like, you know, wondering what's going to happen because there weren't no norms as such. But now everything is like super disciplined. You have the RERA, you have the DLD, you have at that time there wasn't. What year was that? like? So that was around 2005, 2006 when Dubai had just started, to okay. be honest. And then, you know, I was there when it was at its peak, 2008, when the toxic acid kicked in, when B Bank of America got bankrupt and stuff. So I was there during the whole time, but I all, because because I was always passionate about it. Even during the downfall, I think I made a lot more money when the market was down. Because mm. like they say, right, higher prices bring in the buyers. Higher prices bring in Lower the buyers. Lower prices bring in the sellers. Yes. Time kills trade, Right. When they are crying, you should be buying. When they are yelling, you should be selling. Did you copyright that? When they're no. crying, they should buy. You should write that down in court, Dax. It, it takes a lot of years experience to understand this, if at all you do. So I guess it's taken me a number of years to relate to this and to understand this. And I eventually, I guess, a lot of people who've been in the market do relate to this. Okay, so Dax, uh, we have our own research team. And I personally follow you on Instagram. And I see you... Kicking it with celebrities like Mr. Yo Yo Honey Singh, just to name one of them. So, Miss Celebrity, um, can you name drop or tell us what's going on in the Dubai scene? Who lives here? You've already name dropped. I don't know besides, anyone who lives besides here. Besides that actually. one, <laughs> nah, she can't name any. Not even one. Give us one. He's actually a very dear friend of mine. Um, I've known him for a decade. A really, really dear friend of mine. And uh, yeah, I, I mean. I guess he's the only person that I see a lot more times than a lot of my other friends because he happens to be one of my closest friends. Yeah. So from boarding school in India all the way to Dubai and then sales and then into the whole real estate market and to 270,000 plus followers on Instagram. Tell us, how, how was that journey? So basically when I first came here, right, I, like every other person, I wanted to be a cabin crew. That's what I thought I'd be. That was, that's know, everybody's dream. That's everyone's uh, everyone's dream. You know, you think you want to travel the world. That's the only way you could do it, especially when you're young. And, you know, uh, when you're not really making that kind of money. 
So you think that, okay, that's your easy way out. That's your yeah. ticket out. So speaking of which, I actually went to a couple of interviews and I think it was just the universe. It never worked out for me because I think the universe didn't see me I, not to be uh, up in the sky. Yeah. Uh, not to be offensive to any of uh, the service industry people, but um, that's something that ne never worked out for me. I remember uh, my sister, my older sister was here earlier and we were just chilling in the apartment that she was living in at that point. And I was just sat there and I'm thinking like, okay, what am I going to do? Cause like, I need to get a job. I need to, you know, do everything that everybody else does. So I remember sitting there and I was asking this friend of mine saying that what is a job in Dubai that would make you the maximum money? And then um, she just laughed and then she was like, there is this girl that I know, like, again, I don't want to mention her, but like, let's call her D, right? She goes, she makes a lot of money and she does real estate. I was like, really? I was like, I was like, okay, that's something that I would really want to do as well. Now, how do I do this? Like, so I remember she came through the next day and I said, you know what? I said, I really want to do real estate exactly what you're doing. And then she said, uh, she's like, yeah, okay, but you don't have experience. So that's not something that I can do for you or introduce you to my company. So I was like, okay. So I just let it go. I was like, you know what? Like I just apply on my own, go online and so I on and so forth. I bet she regrets it now. Um, no, actually funny. So then a few days after it was my birthday. So. She literally came home. We were cutting my cake. And then she said, I have a present for you. I was like, really? So I was like, what is it? So she said, oh, this is a friend of mine who's opening this uh, new company in real estate. And I've set you up an interview. So I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. And then she's like, look, that's your birthday present from me. And because that's what you wanted to do. I can't set you up in my company. But like, I, this is what I could do for you. So I said, yeah, why not? Anyhow, I went for this interview and at that time, I mean, you know, this is this person that I really respect and still I take him as a mentor. His name is Mr. Mustafa. I remember he interviewed me for about 45 minutes to an hour and he said, you know what, Dax? He goes, you have zero experience. You don't have a driving license. You have nothing. Why should I give you this job? So I just looked at him. I'm like, first of all, you've been, you like, you've been uh, interviewing me for the last 45 minutes to an hour. Obviously, there is something in me that you see. There that you go wants you to keep talking yeah. to me I said speaking of which I said if everyone's going to tell me what you just told me I'll never end up finding a job so then he said you know what okay fine sure like I'm going to I'm going to go ahead I'm going to hire you you're going to be on probation for three months it's like fine no worries my first deal that I closed is this client uh, whose name I can't mention I'm still in touch with him he was one of the first people that I his, actually I sold his unit and that's it, like the first uh, commission that I got. And then there was no looking back. And then the rest just, is history. Yeah, the rest is history. And then it's just about uh, more about developers experience that happened in between coming back to, you know, being with the brokerage firm. But yeah, it's been an amazing journey. It's been an amazing experience. So everybody's dream used to be cabin crew, fly up in the sky. And now it's all about real estate. Everybody wants to be a realtor. So what's your what's your what's your take on that? To be honest, uh, yeah, I agree with you that, uh, you know, it's just the way the whole market situation is right now that every other person that you ask is like, yeah, I'm into real estate. Oh, I'm a realtor. For the simple reason is because they think it's easy money, first of all. And I have no idea why they think it's like that, because it's not like you see a client on the street, you grab him and you're like, oh, you're looking to buy. Here it is. Exactly. And you're going to send him a million just dollars. Just because the market's booming right now, they think it's easy. They don't know how much hard work it is and how much work you got to put into it. Absolutely. So it's more to do with, like I said, I mentioned to you earlier, every client of mine specifically either comes through either referrals or somebody that I've built a bond with or a relationship with. You can't, if you're very lucky in general, yeah, you could meet that one person who doesn't know you out of anywhere, is looking to buy and then comes and, you know, buys through you. But having said that, it's more about your, your market knowledge how long you've been in the field and people gauge that someone who has a million dollars, he knows his game, you know, so it's not like he's just going to come and just hand it over to you. And there you are a millionaire overnight. It doesn't work like that. Let's be honest. Like you may have been privileged, uh, say for instance, growing up, going to the best universities or the best schools, going to Harvard, going to Brown, going to Yale. Right. But along the way, things change and only talent perseveres. Like I said before. Okay. So what I will do is I will name drop range. <laughs> Okay. How did that happen? How did that come into play? Tell us. Give us the whole scoop. So, uh, Nitin, to be honest, I had knew of him and he knew of me because obviously the market's really small. I have a decade's years of experience and there was this common, I wouldn't say friend, but like a colleague, ex-colleague of mine 
And <clears throat> when I quit my pre like the previous company that I quit, once you have certain amount of years of experience, then it's not about where like you want to be. It's about it's like who wants you. It's more about who you want to be with, because mm -hmm. you know it involves money, it involves time, the people that you work with. There has to be a trust factor as well. Absolutely. There was this late lady actually who uh, an ex colleague of mine who recommended me through another colleague and said that you know listen why don't you try range and i was like you know what why not let me like just go ahead and do that so i met nitin and lester the first time everything seemed very well and i literally remember walking out of the office right so now when i'm walking out of this office i hear somebody saying dax and i look back and i'm like yeah so he's like it's me it and wasn't like, doll dax so you know it wasn't an instagram follower no it wasn't it was an individual and he's like uh, do you remember me and i'm like I'm like, who are you? And then he's like, it's me. And it was Brendan. And Brendan actually happens to be my principal's son <laughs> back there in Bodhi. Small world. Yeah. So then I also established that a lot of other people were also uh, within the company. And it's just the way it is. It's a circle of life that you just, you know, all the people in your life that leave just come back. So they that's what I back. feel like right, right? now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it just, I think it was more like a sign when I saw him. He wasn't obviously a factor of a decision-making process, but mm. it's that comfort thing that, you know, somebody Somebody's from back in there, the day. Yeah. And um, I'm mean, Nitin and Lester are amazing. I mean, they are um, absolutely fair. To be, to be honest, like anybody even looking to join a real estate company, they're like the best people because they're always paying on time. They always take care of you. The way they do things, it's, they're so organized. So from no experience to your first interview and now working with a company like Range and like how, how are you coping with that whole uh, the go-to celebrity realtor that you are? To be honest, uh, I'm not an arrogant person. I'm self-assured. I never carry the baggage of my success from one client to another client. If I do meet another client, I literally take him at fa face value. So if I'm selling something to a client who has a million dollars or someone who has $50 million, I think my attitude towards the person would be absolutely the same. Okay, My ego does not operate before my job. I understand the value of time and discipline and also the things that you have to be not taken for granted. I am a very blessed person. I'm full of gratitude. That's something that I do the first thing in the morning is, you know, journaling about how grateful I am about things. If you go on my Instagram, actually, the first few things in the morning is all, because, you know, your, your whole success and your whole day starts with reading positivity and reading positive things, right? So that's how I start my day. And if anyone wants to come onto my page and look at anything or look at my stories, they should also feel that positive vibe that comes. If I could create that within themselves, if they don't have that, so that would just make me happy. And I also end up my evenings pretty much like that by writing positive stuff or like coding from, you know, the quotes that you see on Instagram. So yeah, having said that, I guess that's how every individual in general should deal. I mean, I'm not here to get validations from any executives. I know, I know what I'm doing, and I work very hard towards what I'm doing every single day. I can't say that, oh, I closed this deal and it came so easy. No, it didn't. Nothing comes easy. Even if it's a referral, it's because you've given that person that kind of service, and that's why they've referred you to several clients, and that's why they've come back to you at the end of it. And it also comes down to experience and how you deal with them. Definitely. Well said, Dax. So for our viewers, what are the hot selling projects right now, and what's like booming in the market? So there's different segments. I wouldn't say that I don't look at the lower segments. I'm only into higher segments. But then if you look at the market dynamics right now and the way, you know, whenever you, you read newspapers or whenever you're reading on Instagram, on social media, you have people that say, oh, this person bought this for 145 million, 150 million. So that all comes under the luxury sector. I feel that the luxury sector in general, anything above five, six million is definitely doing well. It appreciates a lot faster as well. Now, if you see the luxury sector and the Uber luxury sector, which is like Omnia, for instance, or H&H, &H, yeah. which is the Four Seasons residences that they've done and, you know, ongoing in DIFC. Right now they have a new project coming up, for instance, and the Eden House again, which is on the canal, right? So if you take Omnia, if you take H&H, &H, Shobha again is an amazing developer. It's a master developer. Um, also luxurious, but the prices are more competitive as mm. opposed to the others. Yeah. So I
will be fruitful at the end of it because whatever prices that you're buying with in general i feel like anywhere in the world yeah if you invest anything which is on the water facing the water you'd never lose money so i really recommend projects that are literally on the water it doesn't matter what developer it is it doesn't matter what price it is you can't never lose money so you blow up your insta stories with positivity and quotes and everything so give our viewers your favorite one the best investment on earth is earth I like that. Winning is not everything, but wanting to win is three Bs, balance, breaks, and boundaries. Awesome. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our superstar, our go-to celebrity realtor from Range, and it's doll underscore Dax on Instagram. And remember, the best investment on earth is earth.